Welcome back to another edition of the Civ Battle Royale Audio Narration Part 66.5, A New Fantastic Point of View. Now let's get to it. Welcome back to a very special edition of the Civ Battle Royale. My name is Gresh Carr. This part is by all means going to be slightly different. As opposed to our weekly full parts, this is a mini part using never before seen images of the cylinder taken from 360 degrees. You can download the mod used in the description below. Remember to come down to our Discord channel to discuss the part upon release. The link can also be found in the description below. Here is our city map, which was absent the previous part. Special thanks, as always, to Malsistra and Laxaraxariskal for putting this together. We begin with a view of the Aussie mainland. Northern, or to the south in this picture, Australia is fairly barren of units, probably due to recent Vietnamese nukes falling. Despite the lack of units in the bottom of the image, the carpet to the south, north, is scary. Note that many of the tiles to, of the sea next to Sydney house both a naval unit and an embarked land unit. Unluckily for the Trung sisters' weaker navy, Parks doesn't seem to have his cousin Henry Morgan's affection for empty carriers. Next up is a perspective of Southeast Asia. We see a Blackfoot exclave as well as Kimberley's holdings. The main event in this slide is the Vietnamese carrier hovering near the Australian-Vietnamese border carrying a nuke. Vietnam's major gains in the war have been the tip of the Indian subcontinent as well as the island of modern-day Sri Lanka. We also see CBR Sri Lanka now exiled to mainland India. This is a nice view of Sri Lanka and it gives us a good insight of where they are right now. To keep it brief, a really shitty position. They are surrounded by the powerhouse of Vietnam with a considerable amount of tech difference. When the war is over, Sri Lanka could be a nice bit of land for Vietnam to acquire and probably wouldn't put up much of a fight. That is, if the Finnish and Ethiopian peacekeepers leave. The Vietnamese have a strong grip on the area, with no Australian units around. An almost 90 degree view of East Asia shows that Japan isn't only radioactive IRL. There aren't any cities on the Japanese mainland with any more than 15 pop, and they're all covered in fallout with no workers on hand to scrub. We can also see that while many nations have dogpiled Japan, none of them seem to care that much about their Seoul city. A flipped image of Northeast Asia, the Yakut Corps is scattered with Brazilian peacekeepers and Boer units outnumber natives in the Mongolian cities in the top right. Interestingly, very few of these cities have very much population, leading me to question the production power. I'm sure a sieve that hasn't sustained so much pop damage, such as the Inuit, could easily annex all of Yakutia. Personally, I don't think they're long for this world anyway. A DOW from Korea and basically any other high or mid-tier neighbor would probably be good night for them, although they've been holding on surprisingly well against the Inuit. The North American Clusterfuck. Mexico and Blackfoot's border is strange. The Rocky Mountains block any meaningful unit push, but are still apparently short enough to launch nukes over, leaving all of the border towns in a state much like real life, albeit with a different country on one side. When me and my sister argue, we need to be quiet to make sure we don't annoy our parents. Similarly, the two combatants have to be careful that their nukes don't clip any of the Inuit's units. Brazil's borders with Morgan's Bucks. I reckon Brazil could take on the Bucks mano y mano without much problem. They have a larger carpet than the Bucks, and both are equal tech-wise. The Buccaneers' empire is so far flung across the Atlantic, owning land in Iberia, the Caribbean, and North Africa, that it's difficult to make a proper carpet anywhere. The remains of Chile, once the peaceful owner of the highest population city on the cylinder, now reduced to a petty corner of South America. The Brazilian army shows no signs of slowing down. The end is nigh for Chile. A view of the Chukchi Peninsula. The Yakuts aren't going to be able to do much damage thanks to the mountain range blocking the rest of the Inuit cities. White Walker units, however, are few and far between. Icelandic Greenland isn't the most beautiful place, a fact that can probably be attributed to the huge amounts of production buildings. A hydroponics plant has been highlighted for 20 Dank Blaze It by T. Pang. This future world building gives plus four food to the city that it's built in. Thanks, TA. The Strait of Gibraltar is under control of the Bucks, as well as most of the Mediterranean islands. Just off screen is Boer Southeast Europe and Icelandic West Europe. Disclaimer, I'm a huge Finland supporter, so the coming slides will be hugely biased. Where should I begin? Right. 
Here we see a post-Spartitian South Europe, a clusterfuck of epic proportions. The boar's recent expansion into Europe is exciting and could open up possibilities to a world of opportunity for further expansion. Swedish cities are being hammered in this slide, but boar units look to be too far away to stop the fall of Constantinople to evil IKEA customers. A meager supply of Siberian units trickles towards the Finnish Middle East. I doubt they'll be enough to capture Gyamri or Jerusalem, but unless the Finns can take out some melee units, Hebron may fall, a city that has already changed hands several times. I can't help but feel sorry for Israel, revived only to be citadel bombed by Ethiopia. This is the slide I wasn't looking forward to. Swedish forces are primed to take Helsinki, the Finnish capital, as well as several other black barred border cities. Note that Finland has XCOMs while also fielding a cavalry unit. However, a swarm of Boer warriors are ready to tear through Sweden who aren't diverting enough units to fight them. Maybe the great musician can play some Slayer during the inevitable slaughter. If Sweden are going down, it seems they want to take their bitter rival Finland down with them. Finally, we end with a look at the Boer core. They have reached the end of the tech tree, evident with their carpet of modern units, including giant death robots and XCOMs. Highlighted is a Madagascan city with a considerable amount of modern aircraft, excluding the bombers. The Boer's recent acquisition of European land puts them in an interesting position. Can they expand further, or will their growth be stunted by the potential David to Kruger's Goliath, Ethiopia? I've been Gresh Carr. Thanks to T Peng for letting me narrate this part. If you have any criticism, shoot me a PM. Take care. And thus ends another edition of the Civ Battle Royale Audio Narration Part 66.5. Uh, if you did not notice before, or you are very confused by the previous narration and what's going on this time, this current narration is turn 694, whereas the previous part was 695. So this is just showing previously what was going on from a different perspective. Uh, it's amazing how much can change in one turn. But with that, uh, I will see you guys on Sunday for another edition of the audio narration. Uh, stay tuned, and we'll see you next time.